Birmingham, Alabama, almost. That don't look good, does it? And we're getting pulled over in Alabama. Here we go. Here we go, she's about to flip right now. What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today is the day we take the $6,700 eBay Mercury Marauder and we attempt to drive it back to Oklahoma City. That's 19 hours from Cocoa Beach. We're doing it with no license plate. And I figured the best way to do this was to say goodbye to Cocoa Beach right here for you guys. I really love Florida. In fact, whole family loves Florida. If we could figure out a way, I guarantee we'd be coming down here to stay for an extended period of time. You gotta watch this water, man. So yeah, 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 okay. I see you, I see you. She's determined to send me away <laughs> a little wet. So without further ado, I guess it's time to hit the road, see if the car will make it back. And uh, I think the most fun part is seeing if we can make it back without getting pulled over with no license plate. Yeah, I see you, I see you. <laughs> Let's get out of here. sheriffs behind us at the exit 82 on 75 north in Ashburn Georgia we have no plates on the car and we've had plenty of cops just roll right past us and let us go but I'm telling you we're getting pulled this time like there is no possible way there's no possible way there's there's none it's not possible that all these cops are gonna just roll right on by us are you kidding me? He got off. Are you Are you kidding me? These are sheriffs. Am I lying? So here she is, we're at a at a rest stop <laughs> somewhere outside of Atlanta. I just wanted to make sure you guys could see there's <laughs> no license plates on this car at all, man. She's really a pretty slick car, for real. I like it, I really do. And the thing just runs, drives, and rides great. Don't worry, I had a lot of people on Instagram wanting to know what the fuel economy is like, what kind of gas mileage we're getting. And uh, I'll be going over that after we get back to Oklahoma. When we finish the trip, I'll give you the total numbers for the whole trip, which is like, what, 1,300 miles or something like that. So we will definitely be going over that as soon as we get back. For now, though, there's a big temperature difference between uh, Florida uh, and uh, Atlanta. So... <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to get my jacket on, go use the restroom, and we are going to get on our way. All right guys, so we are on the side of the highway about 30 miles south of Birmingham, Alabama. And uh Well, as you can see, we got lots of smoke. I'm I'm real confused as to where all the smoke is coming from. Um the tire blew you probably can't see it but we definitely popped a tire here but i don't know why it's smoking so damn bad i don't know what happened we were driving it's fine and, and i know a lot of you're going to say oh the tires are old you should have checked the tires i did check the tires the tires have a 2016 build date on them 
The tires are four years old. They're in excellent condition. They weren't dry rotted or anything. All I know right now is we're on the side of the road. And, uh, yeah, it should be a hell of a lot of fun. This despair has never been on the ground before. This is killing me right here. It's still got the instruction manual. It, it's killing me to have to put the spare on, but let's try not to get run over and get this tire changed. All right, so we made it to the nearest gas station. I put a donut on, right? And we didn't make it, <laughs> I don't think we made it, 300 feet. And uh, the donut seems to have popped too. Tires come off the rim. The rim has been chewed up by the concrete. Um, now we're here at this Air for Charity. The one's a dollar fifty for a dollar fifty for air. So we're gonna try to reseal the bead by putting some air in it from a good compressor. And if that doesn't work, we're stuck. Like legit, we are stuck for the night. All right, guys. So it is the next day. Now we left the car at the uh, Shell gas station, <laughs> and I asked the clerk. You know, we're stranded in the middle of the night on the side of the road. It's like midnight, and. I crippled the car to the gas station where we ended up leaving. And I asked the clerk, I said, man, can I leave this car tonight? I'll be back first thing in the morning to pick it up. There's no tire places open to get this tire done. And he said, no. And he said, if you leave it, we're going to tow it. And I, I just looked at him. I looked at him because I'm like, are you, are you serious right now? I, I have never, I've never had an experience like that before. He said, he said, no, he said, you're going to need to go around the corner, get it off the property. <clears throat> and there was nowhere to put it other than up some dark alley. So I left it. Now, we're at a, a Courtyard Marriott, wherever, Birmingham, Alabama. The car is sitting at a Shell gas station in Irondale, Alabama, which is literally right down the road. I called a Firestone. Firestone doesn't have the rear tires because they're kind of an oddball size. They do have the front tires. It is one of the front tires that blew. So uh, our Uber is on the way. In fact, he should be pulling up any minute. And we're about to find out if the car got towed because if it got towed we're going to have a real big problem because that means it's impounded if it's impounded i left all my paperwork inside the car last night and i'm talking the title bill of sale uh all my documents even my driver's license everything is on the visor the driver's side sun visor of the car so if it's towed it's going to be really fun proving i own the car when it has no plates and all my documents are inside the car currently oh and before I forget, this Marriott, we went to lift up the sleeper sofa last night to set up a bed and found a package for a, 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 uh, <laughs> how do you say that politely, polit in a politically correct manner? No, a toy, uh, a adult boing type thing oh yeah really really classy and uh mold coming out of the ceiling i i find it hard to believe that marriott put their name on this place it's, it's up there right right there marriott put their name on it this place wasn't worth the money we paid honestly very disappointed there is our uber so we are going to get out of here let's go find out if they impounded our car what is going on here okay so obviously the car is still here by the way this the shell here by Benchmark Fiat um, in Irondale, Alabama. I wish I knew what road this was, but the shell owner or the, the shell clerk here, he, he, he was just a douchebag, man. You know, stuck in the middle of the night with a kid and you tell me if I leave my car here, you're gonna tow it. Like that was messed up. There's an Audi dealership right across the street. Uh, other than that, it doesn't look like there's much here, but the good news is the car is here. But what I just noticed is it looks like the front tire is going flat. I don't understand what's going on when we... Yeah, this tire is almost completely flat. It wasn't like this. I'm, I'm really confused, guys. Uh, these tires are in good shape. Uh, at least they were when we left. Now this tire is almost completely flat. Look, look at it. I mean, you can see it's not dry rotted. Right? <laughs> there's, there's no reason these tires should be falling apart like this. I mean, the date code on them is 6 of 16, so that makes these tires four years old. They're still well within their lifespan. They're not dry rotted or cracked anywhere that I could see. But, uh, 
something's going on something's going on and now that it's daylight you can see better it blew out of the sidewall so it's the the sidewall is the weak spot for some reason i don't know if it's from sitting out in the sun and baking and not being driven but i mean normally you would expect to see that these these sidewalls are dry rotted and they're not and there's the date code right there six of six the sixth week of 2016 <coughs> And it just, it literally just blew the sidewall out. The rest of the tire is in great shape. Nothing wrong with it. So, I don't know. I really don't know. And here's the other back tire. It's also still in good shape. And actually, there is a little dry rotting. A little. It's hard to see. But right there. But that's not where it popped. It popped up here. Oh, Wait, look at this. I didn't see this. Oh, you're kidding me. And here too. They are dry rotted. You just gotta look really, really close to see it. Great, great. Because I called Firestone and Firestone, unfortunately, uh, they only have the front tires for this. They don't have back tires at all. They can get them, but it's going to cost me $2,000 for a set of tires. So um, next, I'm going to call AAA. And here you can see the, 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 the donut literally came off the rim here. Um, I'll have to see maybe Firestone. Maybe I'll get lucky. Firestone can pop it back on the bead and air it up. But uh, let's get it over there and see what they can do. All right, so we got new tires on the front. They were uh, they're really cool to show me that the tires on the back are actually bad too. I had no idea. They look good. They even shine up the tires for me, man. Like I've never had a Firestone treat me this good. I, I'm not gonna lie. So I gotta give them a shout out. But look at look at these tires right here. They're practically bald. So the back tires are no good. Um, they offered me a deal on the back ones, but they want almost a thousand dollars for the rear tires, and I just can't do that. Uh, the front tires are brand new, so we got Primewell Valero Sports, or yeah, AS, that's all they had for this. Um, and it is what it is, I man. We're gonna try to make it home. So, big shout out to Firestone at uh, what was the name of this street? <laughs> it's the Firestone in Birmingham, Alabama, it's Oporto, Madrid boulevard firestone man the the text the lady up front I believe her name was rose great people they really helped out truly appreciate them hopefully with a fresh alignment two new tires we can make it the rest of the way home they could not fix the spare so we have no spare so if anything goes wrong with these back tires we're right back where we started on the side of the road let's continue this journey Well, it was bound to happen, right guys? Let's just see how she goes down. Yep, license, paperwork. Hey there, how are you doing today? Pretty good, how are you? Got your license and the insurance in here? Yep, everything's in there. Still living in Oklahoma? Yes. Uh, Palm Bay, Florida. Okay. 
I had a tag that I was going to put on it, but the police down there said it's illegal to put a tag on the car that doesn't go to the car. So they said you're yes, better off. Is. They said you're better off just yeah. Don't put tags yeah, on. You keep your paperwork on. You. Yeah, all your paperwork. You're good. Yeah. See, when I called the guy, he said just bring you a, one of your tags down here and put it on. I was like, no, okay. No, don't do that. And then when I got there, they said you might get your car impounded and you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Yes, so I said, okay. Well, it's the first time we've been pulled over, so <laughs> I think we did pretty good. So you just got this on the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. You bought it from? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to take this back to the car right. with me and I'll be right back. Okay. Y'all right. just sit tight. All right. There's all your information back. Thank Everybody you very much. Thank okay? you. Y'all have a safe trip. Thanks. Okay? You too. Thank you. We are free to go. That, that, that's good news. That means that all those felonies I committed back in the day are still gone. <laughs> there we go. She's about to flip right now. Right in front of you. There it is. Come on, old girl. There you go. 100,000 miles, guys. How about that? She made it. Now all we got to do is get the rest of the way home. And just like that, boys and girls, we made it home. Today, the day I'm recording this right now, it's 10.30 in the morning, February 17th, I turned 40 years old in the Marauder. I don't know, that, to me that seems, that felt kind of special. That right, I, I, I don't know, 40, 40 years old is, it's, it's a big deal. It's a, you know, it's a milestone. It's like turning 16, turning 18, turning 21, and then 30, and then, 40 40 years old i turned 40 years old 
this morning on I-40 in the Mercury Marauder. And when I got home, something really cool was here for me because I saw Hoovy's garage of the Marauder and I saw they actually were supposed to come with a leather jacket. I bought a brand new, this has never been worn, Marauder leather jacket. Check this out, guys. You got your Marauder symbol right here. Let's take this down. Let's see if we can pop it out of its little uh, happy home here. Here we go. Take a look at this. Made exclusively for Marauder owners. It's still got the... Uh, <laughs> It's still got the little tissue paper. And it's a, it's actually a very slick looking jacket. I really like it. Let's get out here in the light where maybe you can see a little better. There it is. It's still got the tags. You can see it's still got the tissue paper under the collar there. I'll sit it on the Corvette. It should be soft enough that it ain't going to hurt anything. And it says right here, made exclusively for Mercury Marauder owners, it's an XL, which is my size. The zipper is still wrapped up. You've got your uh, genuine leather, has natural materials, care and cleaning. Look at that. So yeah, we've got the uh, we've got the new Marauder jacket. Now let's go take one last look at the Marauder. It's a little gloomy today, but uh, that's Oklahoma for you in the winter time. There she is. Um, we weren't aware when we started the trip that the back tires were bald and that the front tires were going to pop. But, uh, oh, we got stopped one more time. I didn't get it on camera. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. And, uh, man, let me tell you, that Oklahoma Highway Patrol, he got me fast. Like, he was on me before I knew it. And by the time I pulled over, he was already out of the car. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to even turn the camera on for it. But uh, he was a young kid. And he was very young. And he was real cool. Both of police officers, the ones, uh, the one just outside of Birmingham, Alabama, and the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, man, both are real cool cops. Um, this guy was like, you went all the way to Florida for this car? He's like, why? <laughs> He's, he literally said, why? He said, is there, is there something special about it? And I said, yeah, there's something special about it. It's a Marauder. And he was just like, Huh? He looked real confused. We had a little bit of spirited driving, uh, not racing, spirited driving in conjunction with another party, um, an Eagle Talon on I-40 here in Oklahoma. <laughs> And it was really shameful. It was sad. Uh, he had the, the Eagle Talon had the big wing, like for the turbo, the GST, had the gauge pods and everything. Um, it didn't go well for him. Uh, all three times it went very very poorly for him so uh, hey if you're watching this uh, Mr. Eagle Talon hey man it was uh, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun I needed it to help wake me up uh, as late as it was I was really starting to get drowsy so spirited driving is always fun she didn't use a drop of oil or any fluid for that matter and uh, fuel economy a lot of people were wondering about, about what the fuel economy was like it's pretty pathetic. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and fire this up. The gas mileage on this bad boy, it averaged almost all highway 23 miles a gallon. That's it, 23. Now, I got a couple, don't worry, we got some work to do to it. You hear that noise? That's the uh, air pump for the suspension. It doesn't sound healthy at all <laughs> and then when you crank it up it sounds like there's a pulley or something that's having an issue let's see if we can hear it this morning i'll be quiet i don't know if you could have if, if you could hear that or not it only does it when you crank the car it only does like when you crank as the car is turning over to start as soon as it fires up you can hear like a like a, a, a light rattle and it's immediately gone. Doesn't sound anything like a timing chain. It does, that's not what it sounds like. It sounds more like a pulley uh, or something. 
I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. But there she is, man. We have the Marauder. We have the uh, the jacket. We have the original floor mats. This car is a two owner. The original owner was the guy's mother that I bought it from. And the title shows that she signed it over to him uh, when it had 23,000 miles on it. So 23,000 miles, his mom gave it to him. So it's been in the same family. Ford serviced its whole life. This car got that man through college. It's been all over Florida. And I know a lot of people were worried about rust, so let me uh, let me get you under there real quick, because I know every, everybody was commenting, going, Randy, you bought a Florida car, it's gonna have rust everywhere. There's no rust on this car, guys. Look at that. Not even the exhaust, nothing. Look at the exhaust pipes on this thing. Yeah, there's no rust on this. Now the rear tires, we got to get those replaced. Take a look at these bad boys. Tell me what you think. Those tires are in pretty bad shape, but the damn thing rides smooth. No joke. I mean, super smooth. But there is almost no tread on them back tires at all. I love this car. I do. So I'll run through some of the key differences I've noticed firsthand driving this car uh, versus all of the other Panther platforms. And that's, that's the obvious, the most obvious is the power. Um, this thing's got quite a bit more power than all the other plant, pan, Panther platforms. And it really shows. Now, what I, I wish the power was available much lower. Um, I, like, I, like, I like the torque at a lower RPM, man. So when you just hit that gas, you know, under 2000 RPM or so, so when you hit the gas, it launches. Don't get me wrong, the car launches just fine, but you can feel that the power really comes in at the higher RPMs, you know, between 3000, 5000 RPMs or so is where, it, now I don't I don't know the, the numbers, the actual specs of this car, but from my butt dyno, it feels like the power band is really in the three to 5000 RPM range. Like that is where this thing just, it's a monster for what it is. Now, don't be confused. Obviously, I've got a brand new Corvette in the garage, and we got a Camaro SS as well out here. It's not that kind of power, okay? <laughs> not at all. It's very unique in 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 the way it drives, the way it handles itself, the way it takes off. It's it's actually very well planted, and it's got enough power to make it fun, to make it entertaining, to make your drive exciting. But it's not the kind of power that you hit the gas and it's like, you know, throws your hat off, buries you back in your seat. It's not like that. It's a, it's like a responsible power, a respectable power. And for a car this old, it's impressive, truly. And it handles the road like a boss. I mean, this thing on the road is just, it is so well planted. It handles itself very well. She is a, uh, She's a beast of a car, man. I love it. We crossed the 100,000 mile mark. I turned 40. There's some big, memorable things that have happened in this car on this trip. I can't lie, guys. Uh, I love it. Like, I, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I really love this car a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. No joke. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. So we got some things to do. I need to get a couple more tires at least. I was thinking about putting some different rims on it maybe not permanently just to save the marauder rims that are on it i don't want to curb check them i don't want them to get messed up so i was thinking about buying some cheaper rims to put on it and to store these rims in case i ever do decide to sell the car which i probably will at some point um sorry guys like this this was this was a wild trip like uh, my first time in florida we drove this car like roadkill style i there's no camera crew with me i didn't bring any tools other than a phillips screwdriver and i brought that so i could put a license plate on the car that i ended up not putting on the car anyway um and we did it we made it we survived it it, it was a little crazy at times but the car Aside from the tires, the car had no problems at all. I mean, th this thing was exactly what he described. So I know for some of you, I clickbaited with the smoke and everything. The smoke, if you were wondering about the smoke, that was from a blown tire. That wasn't uh, that wasn't the car overheating or anything. It, 
kind of was clickbait, but it wasn't because we were literally stranded on the side of the road. We were stuck on the side of the interstate. That smoke was real. Uh, the tire popped like that. And before I knew it, the car was smoking. Um, there may be some air suspension work to do. I don't know. I'm going to need to run codes. Uh, there's no lights for the air suspension that I know of. Um, so I'm going to run codes and see if there's any issues with the air suspension. I do know that that motor for the air suspension is, is making some pretty good noise under there. So probably going to have to replace that. Definitely got to get a paint job on it. So there's going to be more videos of the Marauder in the future. And, uh, it's just as comfortable as any of the others. I mean, it, it really is like this thing is a road, ro road warrior, man. It, it takes the highway with such grace and when you hit the gas it goes from graceful to well I, I won't say it's like it's like a demon racehorse it's not but I mean it it holds its own well it really does you I think you would be if you haven't driven a Marauder with the 32 valve uh, 4.6 I think you're really missing out not not that there's anything wrong with the other 4.6s uh, at all I love them they're all fun cars to drive but this one is way more fun this car is way more fun than the others. This, if you're going to get a Panther, let me tell you now, this is the one to get. This is absolutely the one, the one to get. And one last thought before I go, we stopped at gas stations, obviously at 23 miles a gallon best, uh, 22, 23 miles a gallon at its best. Uh, we stopped at gas stations a few times. <laughs> and every time we stopped, people came up to the car. They knew what it was. When we broke down, um, at the Shell gas station outside of uh, Birmingham, a gentleman came by the morning we were standing there waiting on the tow truck, and he knew what it was, too. In fact, I met him, and, and now he knows who I am. I know who he is. He's a wholesale dealer in Alabama. Um, he does rebuilds, too, but he doesn't do them on YouTube. So we got to talking, and we made a connection. You know, he made a new connection. I made a new connection. It's all because this car blew a, blew a tire and broke down. We met some good people, some great people in YouTube land, people from Instagram offered to come help us uh, in the middle of the night. And I just wanna say thank you to those of you that offered to come out and help. We really did appreciate it, for real, seriously, thank you. Like that was phenomenal to be out in the middle of nowhere and have so much support, so many people willing to come and help us out. The amount of attention this car gets is insane. Yes, it looks almost like any other Grand Marquis or any other, to, to, the, to the untrained eye. Okay, if you don't know cars, you're just going to look at this and think, oh, that's a Grand Marquis. All right, but let me tell you something. There are a lot more people out there that know what this car is than I thought. Because every time we stopped, it drew a crowd. People would walk up to the car and be like, that, that's a Marauder. That's a Marauder. You don't see those anymore. I can't believe you've got one. Wow. And this car is not in great condition. It's in good condition, especially mechanically. But as you saw in the paint, paint's in, in rough shape. So she's not looking her best at all. And even then, people are still walking up going, that is a phenomenal car. That is a absolutely phenomenal car. So that's another interesting thing to owning a Marauder is you can expect that when you're out and about, people that know what it is, people that recognize it for what it is, they're going to stop and want to talk to you. And when you're a car guy or car girl, that's what you want. You want people to stop and talk to you about your car. It's a rare car that's not generally going to break the bank. It's, it's a rare car that I think most average middle class and lower class Americans could actually afford. $6,700 was not a lot of money. I mean, I know that's, that's relative, but I'm saying, generally speaking, for a car, $6,700 was not a lot of money. Now, would I have gone out and paid twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for something like this? No. By the time I'm done with it, how much do I anticipate having in it? It's going to be a bit. Um, so if I sell it, I'm going to have to get some good change out of it when I'm done with it. You know, we're going to do the paint job right. And I know a lot of you are commenting saying Mako doesn't do good paint jobs. Mako can't do a good paint job. I've seen their $300 paint jobs myself personally on my own cars, and they've done phenomenal work for me. Um, on the Honda Accord, they took that car that had almost no paint left and made it look beautiful for like $700. $500, $700. I can't remember what it was. But either way, these are their cheap paint jobs. And other than a run or two here and there and a little bit of trash in the paint, which, by the way, if I take it to a detail spot, they can they can take care of that. You know, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to do an experiment on this car. We're going to take it to Mako and we're going to see what like their best paint job can do. I, I want to see it. So if, I, I think their most expensive paint job that I've seen is like twenty five hundred dollars. And that's supposed to be like original equipment type paint. 
everything should look like it did when it came off the showroom floor. I think we're going to do that. I want this car right. I want it to look like a beautiful, gorgeous Marauder. So I think we're going to do a little experiment, take it down and get the professional paint job done and see what they can do with it. I want this car, and then we, you know, ceramic coat the whole works. I want this car to just shine when we're done with it. So we're going to have to put some money into it. Obviously, this is this is going to cost some money to uh, the, the tires, whatever mechanical stuff I want to get done, probably change all the fluids and stuff. Unless something comes up and the project gets put on hold or something comes up and the project has to be sold. As for the other Panthers, we're going to do like a video driving all of them. Uh, I'll do a video with all four of the Panthers together. Um, once we're done with that video, I'm going to start dropping the other Panthers. Uh, there's no reason for me to own the rest of them. I don't want the collection. I don't need the collection. I just wanted them for the video content to make a video saying I've got all four. So I could say I currently own all four Panthers. Once we're done with that video, I'm going to start letting the rest of them go. The Crown Vic's going to go in for paint very soon. Um, we're going to get it painted all black to make things simple. The Lincoln has a slight vibration at about 45 miles an hour and up. So I've got to get into that and figure out if it's mud stuck to the rims or mud stuck on the drive line somewhere. I, I don't know what it is. We got to figure that out. Aside from that, the Lincoln is almost good to go. It needs a good detail. Um, the Grand Marquis, I actually think I'm going to give that away to my neighbor. I think I'm going to give the give the Grand Marquis away to my neighbor who's been a big help to me on the uh, AAR HQ house. And that should conclude everything. If you enjoyed the content, and I hope you did because it was a... Uh, this was this was this video was huge to make. Like this was a big deal. And if you enjoyed it, please do me a favor, leave a thumbs up. Please. <laughs> please drop a thumbs up, drop a comment, leave your like, um, and subscribe to the channel. If you're not currently subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. If you love the Marauder, give the video a big thumbs up. Comment below, guys. I got to get out of here. I got a Copart walk around to do today. As I said, it's Monday, February 17, 2020. I'm 40 years old, sitting in the Marauder that just turned 100,000 miles. Uh, what a trip. What a trip. And Florida, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get Florida off my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly looking for a second home out around the Cocoa Beach area. <clears throat> so we're going to start, we're going to start actually actively looking for a place out there you know, second, second place to call home. Basically. I'm not, I'm not leaving everything in Oklahoma behind. I'm not shutting down all the stuff that I've set up here. We're not doing that, but, uh, I really could use spending more time in Florida. So we'll see what happens until next time, everybody stay safe out there. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.